So this next video is about using Amazon centric software tools to uncover product ideas. In this case, Helium 10. I should raise a major red flag and say that I am not a huge proponent typically of using software to come up with ideas. In fact, a lot of the early days Amazon sellers say five, four, three years ago, a major strategy was basically to come in to this product research section, go to black box, and then just hitting these like random ranges, say, you know, I want a product that's priced 15 to $30, and I want no more than 200 reviews. And regardless of category hitting search and then coming up with a million different ideas. Sounds great on paper because mathematically it's uncovering all of these opportunistic areas that aren't very competitive. But the problem is, is that they're not customer centric or even niche centric typically. So what ends up happening is, is that you get somebody that comes into the Amazon game for the first time, they create a generic brand, and then they just go find random products that Helium 10 based on certain criteria spit out. The problem is, is that you're not the only person doing that exact strategy because it was so highly taught in courses and YouTube videos. Everybody and their mom was using this approach. And so what typically happens when you use the software research method using a broad strokes approach, not focus on a niche or a customer, is that you decide that, hey, this is a great product, you source it, you launch it, and then guess what? Three, four, five months later, you and like 30 other people are selling the exact same thing. And something that looked great and uncompetitive on paper, months down the line, turns out that it's hyper competitive and very difficult to make money. Everybody starts lowering their prices, the margins aren't there, and then the product is dead in the water. So for that reason, I'm really not a huge fan of using software with a couple exceptions. Some cool changes that have come out of Helium 10 here uh, over the last year or so. If you just come here to the product research, go to black box. If you come to this section here called keywords, what I like about keywords is that you can actually type a niche specific word or customer archetype specific word into this keyword search section here. So in this case, I'm just going to use golf again as an example. And then what I like to do is just to hone it down a little bit based on my own either financial criteria or kind of the, the type of product that I like to participate in. So let's just say that I kind of want a product that's, you know, I don't want to be like less than 15,000 and I don't want it to be more than 50,000 just due to my budget. And let's say that I want to sell products that are a minimum of $45 because I want to play a little bit more in the medium ticket range. I can throw a couple of those filters in just to kind of narrow it down a little bit and then go ahead and hit search. Some people will throw in minimum review counts if they want to find a less competitive category. So they might put a max of 500 reviews. You can do that. I like to keep it pretty open because sometimes there's even highly reviewed products or ideas that I feel like I can really differentiate on and, and put a stamp on that make it really, really compelling as an offer. So I typically don't do those review scrubs, although you can do that, uh, especially if you're a newer seller and just you know, are a little bit unconfident with exactly how to sculpt an offer, uh, you can kind of do that review stuff. But I'll do something like that. I'll typically do the, uh, the uh, revenue range and then kind of set the price threshold that I like to sell for. I typically don't like to sell less than $30 if I can, and, and the higher ticket oftentimes the better. You can also do things like the size tier. So you can go after just large stuff, uh, knowing that some people, especially with shipping rates now, might avoid large uh, products, but you might find a niche there because it's a little bit trickier to get into. That's an opportunity. So look at the filters that make sense to you. And then I literally just kind of scroll um, through this a little bit and I just kind of scan. I'm looking at you know, what is this dollar range and what's the review count just to kind of get an idea of something that might be interesting. All right, golf lights, I have not heard of that before. And then you basically click over here on this little three dot thing and then I just go to view on Amazon. And let's see what this is. So it's golf cart lights. It's got lights for the golf holes. It's got under lights for the golf carts. You know, it's funny, I never would have thought kind of in the golf niche, but this headlight thing could be interesting. Uh, you know, nothing here crazy in terms of review counts and potentially something that we could differentiate on with like packaging and doing some cool stuff. Let's just see here what the top selling light is. All right, so these guys make lights. They're doing 9,000. These guys are doing 18,000. So not a bad product. And like, 
super basic, right? Looks like it's a pretty basic kind of setup. It's made for the easy go cart. We could tap into that easy go kind of brand name and say that our product is compatible with. So honestly, this is one that I would at least kick the tires on. It's doing 18 grand a month. We could do something cooler with the packaging and just the photography in general. And they're not very good at keyword stuff. So that could be one that I would at least put on the list. It's worth further investigation. Um, so that's an example of, of that one. Let's see if we can find any more here. Do, do, do. Golf camo. What do we got here? Okay, 290. So this one's doing about 20 grand. Let's go ahead and view this on Amazon. Giddy up. It's like a bunch of like camo golf bags. That's interesting. Again, golf bags doesn't scare me. If you understand the customer, we can start to figure out what they like or don't like about bags. And then we can layer in that camo, which is pretty unique. There's obviously customers seeking out camo. So yeah, this guy's doing 54 grand. Let's just see his stuff here. So well-reviewed, lots of options. Um, but again, with a design aesthetic and kind of doing some unique features, I would not be scared of this. So this is another one I would throw on the list. But you get the idea, right? We're talking about kind of coming in here, scanning for interesting stuff. I never would have thought of, of golf camo. I never would have thought of golf lights, even though I'm a customer archetype for golfers and have a decent understanding of it. So this is the concept, right? Even if you know the customer, you know the brand that you're looking to sculpt offers around and niches around, you will generate ideas through this keyword stuff. And you can uh, obviously adjust these criteria if you wanted as well. So some other ones that are kind of interesting, uh, let's just look at just a golf competitor. Um, I think GoGo -Go Sports was one. And we can actually throw in an ace in here. Let's go ahead and just take this ace in. So I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna go into black box, go to competitors. And then I'm just gonna throw the ace in here and go to, let's do the same criteria. Minimum 45 bucks. Again, you can do review stuff or shipping tiers if you want. And hit go. So again, this is just generating ideas I may not have thought of before. Look at this, we got a floating golf green. That's super unique. Like, look at this, man. This is this is super unique. Golfers that have a pool would find this probably pretty entertaining for the summer. It's doing 23 grand with just 17 reviews. Go to the product page on Amazon. Yeah, man, this is this is pretty interesting here. And again, this is like a no-name brand. If you had a golf-centric brand, that would be kind of enticing. So this is another one I'd throw on the list. Like, hey, let's let's see if we can have a floating golf green. So another idea looking at a competitor. Another one here, if you want to come to niche, again, you can just enter the phrase here. I usually just like to start pretty generic with golf. Again, you can kind of throw in your revenue range here based on your budget and price if you like. And then we'll just see what it comes up with for the actual niche. And it's going to give us all kinds of interesting ideas. So recycled balls, shoes, golf grips. I hadn't thought of golf grips before. That's an interesting one. Um, so 18,378 reviews. So golf grips is one. So here's one I hadn't thought of, which is a travel case for a golf bag. Again, kind of interesting. I wouldn't have been on my list. Super generic kind of photos, generic brand. And obviously like a kind of lame title. Let's see what this one's doing. Yeah, these guys are doing 29,000 a month. So these are a couple of the elements within Helium 10. Basically, instead of using the generic search that everybody and their mom uses, using kind of set criteria, come into keywords, look at competitive ASINs, and then look at actual niche segments using keywords that describe your customer archetype and niche. And you can generate some really cool ideas, but it involves thinking outside of the box using strategies that most Amazon sellers won't use, using revenue targets, prices, sizing tiers, things that are uncommon because you don't wanna be using the same criteria searches that a million other people are using because that is really gonna be a race to the bottom and very difficult to compete. So hopefully you got some value out of this Helium 10 software strategy for generating product ideas.